can the matter be, dear, dear? What can the matter be? Oh, oh dear. But, Teacher Landau, aren't you ashamed of yourself? Well, ashamed? Yes, yes, of course I am. Oh, no, I'm not. Why should I be? I've always wanted to sing. I wrote songs once, I did. No wonder I'm constantly upset. You and your brother Rufus. You singing out into a public street, and he making love to a common showgirl. Adela, I must take exception to that. She's not a common showgirl. She's Evelyn Macy. And according to the papers, she's some, some pumpkin. But Tisha, you defending a showgirl. Oh, why not? I've always wanted to oh, be. Oh, Letitia. Oh, now, Adela. Oh, upholding our brother in his actions. And he's drinking every night. And... Oh, no, he wasn't. Not last night. Oh. He smelled all right. I kissed him. <laughs> I was only singing because, well, you know because why. You remember Johnny Hastings? It was a long time ago. He sang that same tune to me over there in front of their house. Oh, so long ago. <laughs> he was smiling at me when he sang it. Oh, Adela. Here, toot your horn on this. Letitia, such language. Hey, you. Sorry, old man, but there's 23 skidoo for you. Skidoo? What did I do to have to make a skidoo? That. Better beat it now while the beating's good. Yeah, but you can't do this kind of thing to me. I've got a United States recipe for the citizens. First class A1. And what's some more, i got a New York city license. This ain't New York. This is 52nd Street. 52nd Street, eh? 52nd Street. Those people is too good for Fiorello's Amarelli, huh? Big chicken. Well, maybe someday when my little boy had grown up to be a big musician, I'm gonna pull a couple of feathers too. Maybe they come to my house, a bigger house. And they say, uh, we want to hear Benamino Zamarelli play the piano. You know what I'm going to say? Hey, 22. Skidoo, or I get the jail on you. 52. about the devil and Macy. Scandalous. And to think that could happen to the Rondells. I've never been so mortified in my life. I'll show them. Rondell sitting out there? Paul Rossi, 1904. Rufus, you're a genius. And why shouldn't he be gentle? His father was the greatest connoisseur of wines in this world. 
But I would give for his cellar, Mr. Rondell. And what Rufus would give for it, too. <laughs> <laughs> boy, oh boy, if Evelyn Macy ever marries that guy, we can borrow 5,000 bucks from him just like that. How do you know? Say, I want to start this cafe as much as you do. But how do you know we'll get the money? He's a Rondell, ain't he? Yeah. What's the Rondell got? Money. Money. That's yeah, it. Yeah, I never thought of that. Right sure, yeah. Can you imagine this new place? Oh, packed boy. to the door every night? Yeah. Why, I can just see it now. A bigger place than this. Oh, The yeah. electric sign over the door? Yeah, yeah. There she is, Jack and Sid. Yeah. Sid and Jacks. Jack and Sid. No, no, that ain't got no lift. No lift, why, no. you... Boy, may I tell you something? Hello, Evelyn. Hello. You've been sweet to me, both of you, and I love you for it. And if I had five or even fifty thousand dollars, you could have it. But from Rufus Rondell? No. I'm not going to marry Rufus Boyd. I'm at the shack. It's just like I say, Mr. Rondell, you see, if you've got anything that you want to tell Evelyn that's uh, sort of like a secret, if you don't mind, I suggest that you uh, get her alone, see, like an apart, maybe. Because after all, I know Evelyn, and if you get her alone, I'm sure Said, that she's like... Whether Evelyn says yes or no, you get a check for $10,000. Oh.
It's so nice of you, Rufus, but it wouldn't work. I see. Now back to the old argument. Uh -huh. The moon, the park bench, just so much wasted effort. Oh, well, so be it. My sisters are too good for you. Your kind doesn't belong on 52nd Street. Oh, Rufus, silly. Well, we might as well get down to the facts. You're not interested in things sentimental. We Rondells are big people. Much too good for anyone else. I have that on your own authority. Oh, we, we have railroads and, and steamship lines. Oh, and one steamship line, by the way, goes to a funny little country where a man can claim a bride by the simple expedient of bouncing an orange on her head. <laughs> oh, well, I'm only interested in, in the price of oranges, but I just mentioned the ritual to show how stupid a man can be. Oh, by the way, when did I first meet you? In the aquarium. Oh, yes. Remember? A big fish staring at me through the glass. And you said... I know. Looks like I need a shave. What with? What an epic-making approach. But I thought it was sweet. Well, naturally, you would. May I ask you a very impersonal question? Who do you love? I mean, um, whom do you love? Mm -hmm. Oh, darling, thank you. to your right hand. So, this is what I pay my good money for, huh? A window looker, rather, a dops. Papa, I was... Shut to your mouth while you got your foot in it. You think I want you to grow up like you, Pop? Oh, I ain't crazy about the piano. I want to sing. You want to sing, eh? You can sing without a goggle. You know what you call the Adam's apricot? Look, 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 huh? Okay, yeah, yeah. All sunburn from singing to the upstairs houses. Why do you think I do like those for you, huh? Hmm, that's what I'd like to know. You can't sing, you can't play an accordion, but you can cook. You're the finest chef the Café de Paris ever had. Fiorello, you're an idiot. You think, oh, my little boy, grown up to be the great musician, I want the people to say his papa was a cheese cooker? You think I want him to grow up like them two hop toads from the Café de Paris? <laughs> waiting for the steamboat, waiting for the steamboat, Mr. Lee. <laughs> Who's the idiot now? And if the shoe fits, throw it away. Hey, get on top of that piano before I knock you off from your block. <laughs> Here. Of course, terminates any connection you might have with Rondell Incorporated. I hope that's understood. Oh, now, Adela, my dear. Don't, my dear me. I'm in every word I said. Oh, Adela. Letitia. Look here, sister. Since child's play... You disgrace the family and call it child's play? I want nothing more to do with you. You may take the wine cellar that seems to mean so much to you, but we will keep something that is more important, our self-respect. But he's your brother, your only brother. And because he married me, uh, you... Well, if you're capable of loving him as I do, you couldn't treat him as this cruel and heartless man. Rufus. Adela, I knew you'd take this attitude. But well, I thought that when you met Evelyn, you'd feel differently. I never realized you were such a snob. Well, if it'll make you any unhappier, we intend to live in the house across the street. The house father left me. The father, incidentally, who was once a section hand. Goodbye, Letitia. Goodbye, Rufus. Oh, darling, I don't want you to make a mistake. Mm, my dear, I'm not.
Oh. Oh. Adela, what's the matter? A child. A child born to our brother, and that... That... A child. Oh. Who could have a child? A little girl. Oh, Adela. Oh. for letting me come in and play my squeeze box. I have to get up one dollar and 32 cents. That's all right, Pierre. I'll any time at all. Say, I just got a letter from Rufus Rondell. What do you say? I still love to kiss you. Good night. The So sweet. She'll get lady. She will get lady, won't you? Finest lady in all. Yes, darling. And so will you. And so will I. Oh, Rufus. How queer I am.
prohibition, 52nd Street is full of speakeasies. The only night homes left is yours and your aunties. Me and Jack <laughs> has a swell joint in the middle of the block. And we just hired a dame by the name of Betty Molina that's the best triple time hoover we ever saw. <laughs> She's also the original Tardy R girl, which idea she got from singing one time when she had the hiccups. <laughs> What does he mean by triple time, Margaret? Would you like to see it? Oh, yes. 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 My mammy standing at the window. Hey, wait a minute. Sitting by the window. No, no. My little mammy is standing at the window. How do you know she's standing? Because they took the furniture away yesterday. And look, mammy is singing a plain of little lullaby to me. Just listen to her, folks. Just listen to her. Hey, wait, 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 wait. That's not southern. Southern China. Yeah, that's right. The old lady is never around when you want her. Darby Day. Darby Day, the old homesteader's market, son. I want you to go out and win for good old Colonel White. Colonel, sir, I can't ride in a derby. Darby. Darby. Colonel, sir, I can't ride in a derby. Derby. Colonel, sir, I can't ride in a derby. And you don't look good in one either. Roll again, Colonel. Colonel, sir, I can't ride in a derby because I's overweight. I's overweight right here. Right chair. 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 Hooray! Not that kind of a chair. But who's going to ride Southern Bell? I'll ride Southern Bell, Pappy. Why, my Mary Lou, no gal ever rode in the derby. That's right, Mary Lou. No gal ever rode in a derby derby. You know that. Son, that's no way for a southern gentleman to address a southern lady. No, that's no way for a southern gentleman to address a southern... Quiet. They're off. They're off. I can still make it a win. They're away. They're away. They're away. They're away. Now south and they Away. 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 Now south and they The south. Rhythm of the south. 
perfect sunshine and everybody's happy through the south. Give me the swamplands with the, the weeds and the other things. And the pussy willows. Yeah, the pussy willows. The pussy And the birds and the trees. Let me hear the happy Negroes on the levees. Yuck, 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 yuck. The Southland, give me the twang. Give me the twang. Don't take a deep breath or you'll knock yourself out. What else do you want, Jack? Give me the South. Give me the swamp. Give me the rhythm. Give me the check and let me get out of here. Give me the rhythm of the South. The South. The South. Well, it's the seventh round, see? You're winning all the way. You're cut up a little bit, but he hasn't laid a glove on you. Go on and win now. Seventh round? Yeah. I'm winning all the way? Yeah. And he hasn't laid a glove on me? Yeah. But I'm cut up a little? Yeah. Well, when I go out this round, keep your eye on that referee, cause somebody is slugging me out there. The rhythm of the sound! The sound! Give me the sound! Southern Bell wins by a photo finish! while we're out there on the floor. Who, oh, me? Yeah, you. Well, I was only really talking about you. You know what I do to guys like you? What? Hey, Joe! I just threw a guy out. Yeah, I just to see. And good enough for you, too. You kidnapper. You take my boy out from being in the gym, yes? And you make him play in this easy speak of yours. For two nickels, I would hit you so hard, it, maybe I'd do it for nothing. It's getting tough, huh? Well, you know what I do to guys like you. Yeah, you're telling me, yeah? Well, I'm going inside now and stop all this shenanigans. Here, scrams. Uh, pardon me, pardon me. Are you Sid of Jack and Sid's? No, no. I'm Sid of Sid and Jack's. Well, how are you? He's my card. Al Norman, singer, comedian, juggler, High-class imitator and boy wonder. That's you, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, why do you have the boy wonder in such small type? Well, I didn't want you to think I have a swell head. That's good. Singer, come in. Go ahead, let me see you imitate somebody. Well, uh, I'll give you an imitation of a very bashful high school boy asking a girl for his first dance. You're gonna be bashful. Same boy, 15 years later, goes to college. Thanks very much. Come on, Snake, let's crawl. My shirt is trying to get Benny to quit us. And if we lose Benny, we might as well close up the joint. Now, just a minute. We got two dollars in the mouse trap in the cash register, ain't we? Yeah. Well, one poke at him, we got no poke at all. We kind of use diplomacy. Okay, I'll let you handle it. Fiorella! Hello, my sis. <laughs> just call me Mickey Mouse. How are you, Fiorella? Pal Joe! Pal Joe, how you got like those? <laughs> Didn't I tell you he's a winner? He's always funny. Boy, am I glad to see you. Uh, you ask it, you should have known. <laughs> Your father kills me. I got a bottle of wine that's the real McCoy. Yeah, come on. come on. What do you mean, McCoy? Well, you see this wine aged 20 years just getting across the border. Come on, we should have the station. Come on, across the border. Excellent wine, Rufus. Thanks. At least I got something of value left. 
A couple of idiots, that's what you are. Here we are facing possible bankruptcy, and all you can talk about is wine. Rufus, we've got to get down to facts. We need $100,000 to pull us through, and you're the only one of us that can get it. How? Your sister. Beautiful bouquet. Bottle, I should think about... Uh... Rufus, it's not just yourself. Sorry. Only a short time loan. Can't you understand? You ask me to help you. You're a businessman. I am not. Never have been. This will mean I shall have to go to work. A very unpleasant thought. Even so, I wouldn't ask my sister. Here I sit with only enough money to send my daughter back to school, and I am not complaining, gentlemen. It was wonderful. It was beautiful. <laughs> now, when you go back to England, you make all the girls so jealous, they scratch each other's eyes out. <laughs> now, once more, huh? Here, let me get my arm on you. You ought to be ashamed. This won't set well with my reputation. Your reputation. Talk about a reputation. Playing the piano in the easy speak. Da 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 Hey, Benny. Now listen, Benny, you got us all wrong. Oh, I got nobody wrong. You're both a couple of high binders, tanking up my old man and for what? Now, wait a minute, oh, Benny. shut up. Hey, you telling me shut up? I told him to shut up. Hey, shut up. <laughs> Come on, Pop. Oh, music. Beautiful music, just like when you was a little bambino, eh? Stop that singing. I demand it. Madam, I'm awfully sorry. Sorry. Oh, please, sister, don't make a scene. Scene or no scene? I'm going to stop that no good singing ruffian. Ruffian? What do you call yourself, Miss Ruffin? You got a little niece, the finest lady in the world. But as for you... Don't you dare call my sister a rubber chin. Oh, Leticia, don't make a scene. Shame on you. Shame on all of you. Look at this street. Once a respectable place, and now it's full of dirt. Young man, if you don't take him off your street, I'll have you both arrested. What do you mean, arrested? We work on this street. We got a right to be on this street. If my dad wants to sing, he'll sing. If I want to sing, I... I want to sing. I long to bring you. I do. Button in, huh? You know what I do to guys like you. So that's the way it's gonna be, huh? Until they get tired. <laughs> Benjamin! 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 I want you to meet Miss Martin on day. I'm pleased to know you. Yeah. yeah. Sure. I'm pleased to know you. Would you finish that song for me? Why not? Like that's good for another hour. I want to sing. I've got a song to bring you. I've got someone to sing to. Nothing can stop me now.
wait. I'll be right back. I'll buy it, huh? Uh, he's up on my Adam Leprechaun. Oh, Mr. Rondell. <laughs> Why, Fiorello, I'm ashamed of you. America's finest chef in a street brawl. <laughs> A drunk, what you mean? No, no, my good friend. Them two hop toads, they give me the drink of the boot's leg, I take one sniff and snap, and I'm a stiff. <laughs> It'll be worse than that if we leave you out here. Come on, come in the house. Such a wine. That's the necktie of the gobs. <laughs> Thanks, Fiorello. But more about your son. Didn't you tell me once in the Cafe de Paris that he was going to be a great musician? You said a genius. A genius? A easy speaker. That's what he is. Well, he seems to have done all right by you. Too much. So much so, it makes me sick. Look, it's 60 bucks. He's a cuckoo in the head, that fellow. Hey, Mr. Rondell, if I got the money, I put those two hop toed bootlegs out of the business. I would open up easy speaker next to the door, and with my good cooking, I would bring in the customers. And such wine like this, I would keep them there. Then I would push my son out of the easy speak, and he would have to become a genius. But your cooking and my wine, a cellar full of wine. Fiorello, suppose we call it a bargain. Zamarelli and Rondell, what do you say? <laughs> what I say? <laughs> Spetta momento. <laughs> I'm so happy I got a bitch in my belfry. Zamarelli and Rondell. That's a beautiful combination. I'm a cuckoo's. Take it away. Subito. Hmm. One thing I insist always in my place is the customer is almost right. I will fix myself. Eh? Say, why are you suppose he is a pair? You, you telephoned his wife? Yes, I did. She said he didn't come home last night. She's called everywhere. The police station, the emergency hospital. She called the mortgage? The mortgage? Yeah, the place where you don't need a doctor is too late. Oh, the more, I don't know. Well, then I call him myself. Hello? Operation? Centrale? Push him up a number, please. The nickel? Yeah, this ain't no slops machine. The dialy? What do you mean, the dialy? Oh, no, oh, the little wheel and the telephone. Hey, yeah, got one here. It's no good. It's full of holes. No, he's broke, too. No, he's broke. I'm back every time. I put my thing in the hole. I can't pull him out. I don't touch him anymore. But one by one, I'll give me Calamadon. Calamadon tree, two times around with a... No, two times around. Look like a little donuts. I don't know what they call English. Cosa piccolina come here. Who, me? Sure, I'm Italian, fellow. Napoletan, la pasita. Who, you? Irish people, I know. That's all right. Irish people is pretty good people. No, I say Irish people are good people. Say, you're the one talking to me, give me inflammation, please. Hurry up. Hello, that's your inflammation? Say, inflammation, I want you to do me the flavor, please. I want you to look your telephone books and give me the number for the mortgage. I want the mortgage, the place where everybody lives is dead. 
Hello. Hello, that's you, Mr. Mortgage? Say, my friend, uh, Mr. Mortgage, my friend, uh, Pierre Lazzaroni, I can't find him in no place, so I want you please go look your icebox. Yeah, I see you want you go look, I can't hear. Stand up your phone a little bit, please. No, I can't hear. Hey, Operation, I was talking with, what's the matter? I was talking with a gentleman, you cut him up. Well, push him back where he was standing before. I can't see where he's going. I can't see in the telephone. Get out of the way. There they come now. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Morgan. I'm sorry. The operation cut you off. I can't hear. Stand up your phone, please. I, I can't hear. Stand up your phone a little bit. Well, jiggle up your hook a little bit. I jiggle up mine. Jiggle up yours, too. That's better. Now I can hear myself pretty good. Say, Mr. Morgan. My friend, Pierre Lazzaroni. Say, hello. Hello. I say you go see if you got one little talent fella about a four foot and twelve inches high. Yeah, sure you got a two legs. Last time I see him, he got a two legs. Last time I see him, he got a blue sooty. No, sooty. No, the commission in 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 the commission Why don't you give me my share? All right. One for you. One for me. Two for you. One. Two for me. Three for you. One. Two. Three for me. Four for you. One. Two. Three. Four for me. 
Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll do the counting. All right, you count. Yeah. One for me, one for you, two for me, one, two for you, three for me, one, two, three for you, four for me, and one, two, three, four. Yeah, I guess you're right. Good evening, gentlemen. My card. What is that with you with these cards? Al Norman, poet, sculptor, high class sleeping and Monopoly player? What's a Monopoly player? What's that? Well, I can't work all the time. So what is that other thing, that uh, high class uh, sleeping? What's that? Yeah, what is that? Well, you see, everybody gives imitations of people singing or dancing. Yeah? I'm gonna do something entirely different. I'll show you the way different people sleep. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> the world's champion wrestler. The Scotsman. nervous man on a hot summer night. Rufus, you're acting like a lunatic. You can't go on letting your sisters think they still have money. But I am. Now, see here, Rufus, I'm their lawyer. I handled their money, made investments as they directed. Saw it all fall into a bottomless pit when the crash came. I would have told them that, but... But I wouldn't let you. They're my sisters, James. And even though they'll have nothing to do with me, I still love them. All that they have left is pride. And if they lose that, they'll die. And I don't want them to die. Of course, you haven't any pride. Your daughter coming home from Europe, these letters rejections to the party you intended giving her. Rejections from people who once were proud to be known as your friends. No, Rufus, you've been hurt. You know you've been hurt. But whether you like it or not, I'm going to tell you who influenced these rejections. I know. My sister Adela. That's not my problem. I only want to do what I think's right. My problem's ahead of me. I don't want Margaret to know what kind of a business I'm in. And I can't tell her that I'm giving money to my sisters because I know just how she feels about it. No, James, you're right. I am hurt, terribly hurt, not for myself. But once upon a time, I promised the sweetest woman in the world that I'd make a lady out of our daughter. The kind of a lady that would make Adela ask for forgiveness in her prayer. But my dear Mrs. Uh, Sisters Romdell, maybe I don't explain myself right. But your brother Rufus, uh, he don't feel pretty good about that. That will do. Furthermore, if they refused his invitations, he brought it on himself. But sister, he... Letitia. Good day, sir. Okay, docs, I go, but maybe when I'm going back and he's crying like a little baby, I don't be so nice like I just have been. You know, if I'm a two sisters like you and I got a brother who loved both of me like he do... You mean he told you that? Oh, you bet you my boat. You say only yesterday he was... That is quite sufficient. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. You pardon my intrusion. Letitia? Mr. Samarelli, uh, just a minute. Please don't think I mean everything she says. And please tell Rufus it wasn't my fault, will you? Oh, I'm sure you will. And tell him I keep everything he ever wrote to us. And here they are. And everything about Margaret, too, since she was that high. She's beautiful, Mrs. Amarelli. I've never talked to her. Not once I haven't. 
here's some clippings about her and some pictures. And here, oh no, no, that's a song I wrote once. It's silly. Oh, of course it is. And I've got pictures. Why, Mr. Zamorelli, you're crying. No, I'm, I'm not the cry. Please, only you. Your sister should get in my eye a little bit. Goodbye. When I ask them to come to the party, they refuse me. I get so mad, I forget what I'm gonna do. The thing that I can't get over is that they do it to such a swell guy like Rufus Rondell and that sweet kid of his. What are you sitting there like a dog for? I was thinking about Margaret. Home tomorrow night, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Wait a minute. Nothing is too good for Evelyn Macy's daughter. We'll give a homecoming party to Margaret, and Rufus Rondell won't know a thing about it until it's too late to stop it. You said it, boy. And we'll invite every waiter and busboy and entertainer on 52nd Street. Boy, we'll give a party that those society people never could touch. So I thought it'd be nicer to have a quiet dinner at home. Just the two of us. Well, I've got so much to tell you, and so much to ask you. It's great having a father again. Mm -hmm. You know, darling, you've only got three people in the world. Your father and your two aunts. Just my father. Oh, I know how you feel about it, but... But what? Well, you don't know them. You haven't even spoken to them. Have you? No, not in years, but... Well, you're my daughter, their niece. It'd make me very happy if you if would... If I'd be nice to them and speak to them? Darling, after the way they behave towards Mother. Oh, Margaret, please. It's for your own good. You're part of the family. All right, as part of the family, I suggest we drop the subject. And let's get acquainted. So it's a just like I told you. Mr. Romdale has been a friend to everybody on a 52 street. And he has never asked nothing from somebody. So now we got a chance to do something for him, and we must not drop him down. So if you cannot behave like a ladies and a gentleman, just stand up straight like a statute, and be nice and peaceful like a little baby. I get what you mean, big boy. I understand your language, but get this. If that yodeling dame from your joint shows her map around here, I'm gonna scratch in a few rivers and mountain ranges. Say, why you say things like that about Minnie? She's a nice girl, sweet, like an angel foot spy. Oh, she's sweet, why, the dirty little thief. She caught my heart break. Yeah, that's right. Why, I was the first one to start. Teddy, a teddy, a teddy, a Huh? You started. Teddy, a teddy. Tatty ya ta ta Yeah. You're crazy. Wait a minute. I was there when she started. Tatty ya ta ta What are you talking about? Tatty ya ta ta 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 A quiet little dinner, eh, Dad? Ah! It's great to see you again. Well, You've been look who's coming. Oh, Margaret, how are you? <laughs> you big boy, then. Give it that. May I? Yeah, I love it. Rondelli don't look pretty good. And I got a big surprise for you? Oh, yes. Quite a surprise for you. Quite a surprise. Don't you believe it? Hey, there's that Dame Minnie. Some party. You said it, big boy. Well, she opens her mouth to me once she'll need a zipper to close it. Well, you'll be quiet. That guy she's with us, Porky, the toughest guy in New York. Think my father's a fine man, don't you, Benny? The best in the world. That is, next to my own father. <laughs> I like to hear people talk like that. Benny, what does 52nd Street think of father? The salt of the earth, and they should. He set most of them up in business. You know, I can't understand him sometimes. 
good part of all this. He seems to be the most important man on the street, and yet he's gone to such pains to keep me from meeting the people here. Well, maybe he knows best. You wouldn't like the no, sort well, of life. No, don't be too sure. Remember, Mother was an entertainer. Yes, I know, but your dad had never let well, you... Well, that's just the point. He seems to think that all my schooling abroad and the people I've met has taken that germ out of my blood, but it hasn't been. It. There's no future in being a lady. And you think there is here? No, I'm sure of it. And I've got to prove to Father that he and I are no better than anyone else on the street. How, for instance? Well, for instance, if the people in there who were sporting for a fight when we arrived were to really start something and get rough, or it would be a calamity for Dad at first, I know, but it would prove to him that I'm not the snob he's been trying to make out of me. But I don't give a hang for all this respectability. Well, I don't know how I can do it. Go on, you're a smart young man. Think of something. Go on. And never darken my balcony until the great calamity starts. Hiya, Porky. How's the home-up business these days? Smart guy, huh? Oh, yes and no. Say, Minnie, Betty says you stole her, uh, Daria. She did? Yeah. Easy now, man. Say, I'm gonna sock her right in the kisser. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Romdell, but maybe I chewed off more than I can bite. I know, Pierrot. You meant well, all of you. You don't realize what a spot you put me in. Make it easy on yourself, sister, but just remember one thing. We've got to act like ladies. Yeah, well, Rondell's daughter won't have to know anything about what I'm going to do to you. <laughs> You're so sweet. <laughs> Such a name. Out! Jolly crowd, don't you think? <laughs> Lovely place, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. So I stole Teddy Ag, 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 did I? You're darn right, you stole Wait a minute. She was doing that on the street before you ever got in town. Wait a minute. 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 And I advise you not to blow your siren. Oh, that's quite all right. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I guess the great calamity has arrived. Yes, I was humiliated tonight. I've always tried to keep my activities on the street apart from my home. But when you admit that you were responsible for what happened tonight, well, it's too much. Oh, I'm sorry you've taken it all so seriously, Father. And I apologize. But I have hoped to prove things to you. Things I couldn't convince you of otherwise. I know. That you like all those people. That I'm getting old-fashioned, stodgy. Oh, you've hinted these things all evening. Father, please try to understand them. I understand some things very well. Your mother's last wishes. The fact that I've lavished everything on you to try and carry them out that I went into a shady business, broke the law, that I've worked and worked hard to make you into... A snob like my Aunt Adela? If that's what you wanted, Father, you failed. I'd be awfully unhappy living the life you have mapped out for me. And I'm sure Mother wouldn't have wanted that. So I'm going to follow your example and go to work. You ask me, I think you're acting like a spoiled brat. I came to get a job, not advice. Now listen, Margaret, you'll take what we give you. Jack and me has been very nice to you all these years, writing your letters and things like that, and all because we thought you was going to grow up and be a lady like your mother. Well, you didn't. Don't you? Shut up. Go ahead, Sid. Your mother didn't turn your father down, even when her sisters gave him a go-by. And believe me, he was no angel then, just a plain guy. And a regular guy, and he's your father. Yeah. Right, that's the just way a you... moment. Sit down. After all our fatherly advice, do you still want to go to work for us? Yes, I do. Okay, you do. Now, wait a minute, Jack. I think you're making a big mistake. Making a mistake, am I? What do you think might happen to this half-wit if she goes out where people don't know her? Scram, I'm gonna fix up the contract. You'll be sorry. Hello. 
Now I get the idea. You were signing up this Margaret Rondell to take my place in the show. Oh, listen, Betty, you gotta be reasonable in things like this. If we have Margaret Rondell, this joint will clean up. Well, I know one person in this joint who's gonna start cleaning up right now. Now I know we've made a mistake. If we have brother, it's too late now. Can you imagine the sign over the door? Margaret Macy Rondell? She sings. She dances. Over what door? Now listen, Benny. I want... Go on, you tell him, Sid. Now you make me a partner, huh? Well, you see, Benny, Jack and me, we're very shrewd, and we would... What talk. are you doing here? I'm going to work in this show. <laughs> Boy, if she can dance, I can balance the budget on my chin. You keep out of this. I don't yeah. know who gave you the right to interfere. Margaret, you don't need the money. Your dad's got plenty, and besides, he's a swell guy. So is your father. What are you doing here? Oh, but I'm different. You were once. Listen, it takes experience to... It does? How'd you know I haven't got it? Play that piano. Something hot. Anything. Oh, but Margaret... All right, without music. Not if I can help it. Listen, Mr. Rondell, no one is any worse than they want to be on 52nd Street or any other street. I want you to come home, Margaret. He gave you my answer. Well, I guess I had it coming to me. Boy, I couldn't have done it better myself. Get out. Yeah, but listen. Come on, come on, you heard him. For what? For what you did. You hurt your dad. I could see it in his eyes. He'll be hurt only as long as he clings to that old-fashioned hypocritical attitude. If you can't see my side of it, then I'm sorry. Well, I guess I was wrong. Hello, babe. You're a pretty neat number out on that. What do you say about a little supper after? And it's like Margaret says, her old man won't even speak to her anymore. Father. Okay, father. And if he won't speak to her, she can't stay on the street. If she isn't going to stay, I'm certainly not. So we formed a team to go on the road. Rondell and Zamorelli. What do you think of it, Pop? I think you're both foolish. You both belong to 52 Street. And 52 Street belongs to you. But if you're crazy enough to one that needs sweet son of a man, then I gotta look out for the both of you. Respect a moment, though. I got an idea. Just come to me now. If we can get you, Papa, to say that he was wrong all the time, then you stay here, no? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> ben. <laughs> I know, I do. Letitia, she looks just like the pictures of our great aunt Martha, no, doesn't she? She looks like your mother. Your mother was so oh, beautiful. Oh, wasn't she pretty? Hey, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> what about my dad's proposition? Young man. I shall never permit a cafe in my house. No. Not even if it brings our brother back to us. Hmm. That's what you think, but I think a difference. That's my business now. And besides, I'm going to be a relation. <laughs> I hate to do this, but here goes. Look. That's uh, deposit slips from the bank. 
Money your brother put in there for you since 1929. What? What do you mean? He means your brother's been supporting you all these years. Oh, how humiliating. And we've been on our... We've been broke all this time. You said a year full of that time. Now, what do you think of my proposition? I will furnish the money. We will get the best actors on it, 52 Street. Now, you like to write songs. Okay, you sing them. Then I will tell him that you're doing a strip of these dance, and he will come running. And when he does, we will get him. Am I good? I hope so. Preposterous. Ridiculous. A Ron Jeremy... That's your trap. Hey, it was you that caused Johnny Hastings to leave me. It was you that drove our brother out of the house. It was you that kept me from doing the thing I wanted to do most. To be an actress like Margaret's mother was. You've been the whole thing around this place until now. But from now on, I'm going to be the big potatoes. Mr. Zamorelli, we'll open up the biggest jerk in town. Speaking, I know some of you are reeking with the saddest of conditions, temperamental inhibitions, but you needn't be so ill at ease. You all have possibilities. I'd rather do a high kick than pretend that I am psychic. Oh, but I know the tiny roses can build up to a psychosis. And you shouldn't have a thing like that. You do. And you wouldn't want a thing like that. Would you? For something terrible has happened. Look at my eyes, full of the weeps from the pleading and the trying to... Trying to what? Oh, it's no good coming to me for sympathy. I warned you to keep out of my private affairs. Now you've got your son in it. But my son, she's got nothing to do with it. Well, my daughter, then, it's the same thing. Now you go back and tell her... Uh, but I got nothing to tell you, Lord. It's nothing what she's got to do with it. It's your sister, Leticia. 
My sister, Letitia? What about her? Oh, oh I can't tell you. I, oh, I'm ashamed myself of her. Well, what is it, you? Well, she, she's going to do the striptease dance on the floor. She's what? <laughs> A photograph that he had sent His loving letters in my pocket How I adore this handsome gem And there was I to meet him Where the swans were on the lane He'd know me by a parasol of lace When suddenly a cabbie stopped My heart began to quake And there we stood at last Face to face Face to face, all he said was one thing three to do. I mean that he said that to me. Uh, there was I expecting I'm of you. But he said twenty three to do. That means cram. I was in my ostrich feather hat, my beaver mug, my pleated. was so cold, so angry. Oh, Adela, I'm so sorry. I've spoiled everything. We won't get him back. I just know we won't get him back. Sorry, ladies, you're under arrest. Under arrest? What for? No license, ma'am. Oh, Letitia, didn't you get the license? Oh, I wanted our jerk to be a surprise for everybody. Well, <laughs> come along. Sit 
Thank you. 